Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. I'm Chris Rycroft, and in this video, we're going to talk about stiffness in the context of numerically solving ordinary differential equations. You may have heard of stiffness in the context of ODEs, which is an important concept, even though it doesn't in general have a precise mathematical definition. However, one situation where we can define stiffness is for linear ODE systems of the form y prime equal a of y. And here, we can say the ODE is stiff if our matrix A has eigenvalues that differ greatly in magnitude. This idea can also be extended to nonlinear problems by looking at the Jacobian of our ODE system. However, here the analysis will be more complicated since our Jacobian will change in time. Returning to the linear case, the eigenvalues of our matrix A determine the timescales on which our ODE will respond. And therefore, if we have eigenvalues that differ greatly in magnitude, that tells us that our ODE system involves multiple disparate timescales. Now, situations like this can happen in many practical problems of interest. And as a small example, let's look at the case where we have a flexible ball that's impacting a hard surface like a table. And we want to write down an ODE system that can model the vibrations in the ball and the table that are coupled together during the impact. And if we look at the ball, then it's made of soft material, and the vibrations in the ball will happen on a time scale of fractions of a second, and are something that we can actually perceive. However, the table is made of hard material, and so vibrations in the table will happen on a much faster time scale of, for example, a millisecond or less. Now, in many situations, we are primarily interested in the longer time scales. For example, we might not be that interested in the table vibrations because they're happening on such a fast time scale that they're almost imperceptible to us. And in that situation, we might therefore want our numerical scheme to take large time steps that can resolve that long time scale accurately. However, if we use an explicit scheme, then we may be forced to take extremely small time steps in order to avoid instabilities associated with that fast time scale. And in this context, it can be highly beneficial to use an implicit method, since that enforces stability regardless of time step size. So from a practical point of view, we can say that an ODE is stiff if there is a significant benefit in using an implicit method instead of an explicit method. And, for example, that will occur if the time step required for stability is much smaller than the size required for the accuracy level that we want. Now let's look at a specific example, and we're going to look at a two-component ODE system, where we have y prime equal a y, and we use initial data of y subscript 0 equal 1 comma 0. And in this situation, our matrix A will have components 998, 1998, minus 999, minus 1999. And if we analyze this matrix, we find that it has eigenvalues of size minus 1 and minus 1000. And we can therefore write down an exact solution that involves exponentials e to the minus t and e to the minus 1000t. So in this problem, we therefore have a slow and fast time scale. And we're now going to look at some Python examples that can demonstrate how we can solve stiff systems like this. And we'll look at some of the limitations we would have with an explicit method and see how implicit methods can do a lot better. Let's now take a look at the program stiff.py that can demonstrate solving a stiff differential equation system using both explicit and implicit methods and can compare the results of the two. And in this program, we're going to solve the stiff differential equation system that was mentioned in the slides of y prime is equal to a y, where we're solving for a two component solution y with initial conditions at time zero of one and zero. And our matrix A has eigenvalues of minus one and minus a thousand, and our exact solution therefore has components proportional to e to the minus t on a slow time scale and e to the minus 1000t on a fast time scale. 
And if we now take a look at this program, we first define our matrix A, and we also define a 2x2 two two identity matrix that we'll make use of, and we'll define initial conditions for both our explicit and implicit solves that match the exact initial condition. We'll define a starting time t equals 0, and we'll choose a time step h to be 0 0.0005, and that's currently within the stability region of the explicit method based on the rapid time scale from the e to the minus 1000 t term. So we'll then perform time steps until t reaches a value of 2, and we'll evaluate our exact solution and print our exact solution and our explicit and implicit numerical solutions. For the explicit step, we'll take a forward Euler step, and for the implicit step, we'll take a backward Euler step. And for the two-component system, taking this implicit step will involve solving a linear system using the matrix of i minus h times a. So let's now go ahead and run this program. And by default, this program outputs the results to the terminal. So we'll run this program again and save the results to a temporary file called out. And let's now look at the results in GNU plot. So I'm going to put the time variable on the horizontal axis. I'm going to concentrate on the first component of my solution and I'll put that on the vertical axis. I've also defined the position of the key and also the Y range. And I've also defined the exact solution for the first component of my ODE system. So let me now go ahead and plot the results. And so we see here that the explicit and implicit methods both match our exact solution very well. And when we start from this initial value of y equal 1, we see that there is a rapid increase up to a value of 2, and that is due to that rapid time scale from the e to the minus 1000t happening on a very short time frame. And to look at this in more detail, let's change the range of t that we are looking over. And if we now plot our results again, but just over the range from 0 to 0 0.01, then we can see that very rapid exponential from our e to the minus 1000 t term. And here, our numerical time step h is chosen to be small enough that both the explicit and implicit methods can resolve it. So now let's look at increasing our time step. And while this numerical scheme is working with both explicit and implicit methods, we are restricted to a very small time step at present in order to resolve that explicit method and get stable results. So suppose now that we choose a time step that is substantially larger. So for example, let's look at h is equal to 0 0.02. So let's now run our program again. And we'll note here, when we run this program, that the explicit method has gone unstable, and we can see that there are very large values being reported for the explicit solution. And this is exactly what we would expect, since we have violated the stability region of our explicit method, and therefore we would not expect to get convergent results. So let's now run this program again and save the results to a temporary file. So let's first go back to the 
full time range. So again, the implicit method matches our exact solution quite well, but the explicit method, which is hard to see in this plot, rapidly goes unstable and does not match the exact solution at all. So let's now zoom in on the behavior at the start of the integration. And here we can see again that our explicit solution rapidly goes unstable. We can see that the implicit solution does not actually resolve that rapid time scale. And our purple line here is actually not capturing that rapid exponential decay from our e to the minus 1000 t term. However, it is matching the long-term behavior on the slower time scale. And it's correctly capturing the decay of the solution to this slowly relaxing exponential. And this ability for the implicit method to capture the slow time scales without having any restrictions from the fast time scales may be highly desirable in many situations. It's worth noting that Python has built-in solvers for stiff differential equation systems, and the program stiff2.py demonstrates one of these for our example stiff differential equation system. And in this program, we first define the right-hand side of our differential equation system, resulting from our matrix A multiplied by our two-component solution vector Y, and we'll define the same initial conditions that we used before. We'll then make use of the ODE function in the scipy.integrator.ode module, and we'll set the integrator to use in this function to be zvode, which has the functionality to solve stiff systems. And you can find documentation about this online, and in particular, the ZVODE function has one option referred to as BDF, standing for backward differentiation formulas that is appropriate for stiff differential equation systems. And we then provide some options to our ODE solver. We set our initial conditions, and we also set some parameters. We set some that control an evaluation of a Jacobian of our solution, which is required for solving the system with the BDF method. We'll then apply time steps until we reach t equal two, and we'll integrate and perform one time step, and then output our exact solution and our numerical solution, and also the difference between the two. So let's now go ahead and run this program. And by default, this program outputs its results to the terminal. So we'll redirect these to a temporary file called out again. And let's now take a look at the results here. So we'll plot our exact solution and we will plot our numerical result from the SciPy integrator. And again, we see very good accuracy between the two. So one thing that we can note here is that we could actually look at the difference between the exact solution and the SciPy result, and that will be stored in the sixth column in this data file.
And we see here that the errors from this numerical solution are very small indeed. And we match to a size of around 10 to the minus 7 in accuracy. So this demonstrates that the built-in Python routine can be quite effective for solving stiff differential equation systems.